I remember so well that first costume, <laughs> that fairy costume. I had a little pink silk undershirt. It was festooned with a, a piece of, of tape from which cascaded all kinds of little strings of cellophane. So we all ran around and glittered in the, in the light. <laughs> I was a child actor. I was an only child, and I lived a lot in my imagination. Uh, my mother recognized this, and she took me to the Toronto Children Players. The Toronto Children Players performed plays for children, by children, in Eaton Auditorium, which was an 800-seat theater. I don't know how we did it, but somehow or other we managed to project our tiny little child voices into that huge space. Once you're bitten with the theater bug, it's hard to get rid of it. It's an exploration. You're always investing in another world in theater. Your job as an actor or as a director is to let the playwright's voice be heard. Find the reality of the character. Know how the phrase has to land. With either art form, you never get it perfect. You know, there's always things, oh, I did this better last night than tonight. And with directing, there's some little moment that you never quite get right, or the actors can't ever get to your vision. But when you find an actor, and you just have to give them a few hints here and there, and, and a few nudges, and then they fly. And that's very satisfying to see people fly. <laughs> well, my husband, who is he? Um, he is a very famous architect. He was a huge influence. He changed my life. He opened my eyes to see in a way I had not ever seen before. He was also a, a challenge in very many ways. When we started a family, things became more, more complicated, and uh, there were more uh, demands on me and less uh, time to focus my attention on, on him. Uh, Tilly, I really don't want to talk about the drinking and, and, and the pain and all that. Is that okay? I mean, what are you trying to, you're not, you're not um, going to use this in, the, in your documentary anyway. You just want to see my, my eyes light up? Is that what you're trying, what are you trying to achieve with this? I might use it. <laughs> oh, you might. Oh. But there was this woman. I, I don't know whether there was a relationship or not, but she was very devoted to him and drove him home in her white BMW. It would drive up into the driveway the next morning. But Ron adored me. I knew that. I could make him do anything I wanted, except stop drinking. <laughs> I think it was about that time I decided that, that there was nothing to do but to leave because the, the, the family were suffering, the children were suffering, and I realized that I had to get, I had to get out of that. So I was still working at, at Elephant Records and I was still working at the alumni and uh, neglecting my family. But you know, I had to rebuild my, my life too. They, they were young people with their, their own friends and their, their they were, they were ready, Emma in particular was, was ready to fly. And uh, I, I needed to, I needed to recover from the uh, feelings of failure and inadequacy that had uh, resulted from the separation. I was convinced that I should play in the Trojan Women. I had the time of my life playing that role. I loved it. I absolutely loved it. When I came out for my curtain call every night and I hear this sort of roar of approval from the audience, I said, oh, this is the life. This is for me. <laughs> the Trojan Women is the story of 
what happens to the women after the fall of Troy. And I played Hecuba, the former queen of Troy. It's, it's Hecuba who leads the women onto the Greek ships. Why? Because she is queen. Because she is the queen. She has to be strong for the rest of them. That's the queen's job, isn't it?